$1.6 billion per day. That's how much the global crime business generates. That's $2.2 trillion per year. I could go on all day about how insane that number really is, but this got me thinking. All this wealth has to go somewhere, right? So we look deeper and realize that throughout the years, this, let's just call it industry, is controlled by a handful of powerful organizations across the world who operate in the shadows. And so this made me curious. If you've been part of the culture mafia, you know we like to look deeper at how the world really works. But today, we're going to do things a little differently. We've created a sort of score system based on some key criteria to make a list of the most powerful organizations in modern history. Make sure to watch to the end for something very important. I'll leave it at that. And so, without further ado, here's our list of the most powerful mafia organizations of all time. Number 10. La Cosa Nostra where do I even begin? From taking over one of the most powerful cities in the world, to then establishing an entire new city, then taking over an entire country, as well as ties with a lot of three-letter agencies, <clears throat> and even helping win World War II, Casa Nostra is without a doubt one of the most powerful and influential organizations of all time. We survived and prospered for almost 100 years under some difficult conditions. I mean, we always had law enforcement after us. But why? Because we had structure. We had a lot of buffers. We had discipline. We had authority. And we had respect among one another. The roots of the American Mafia can be traced back to waves of Italian immigrants who flocked to the shores of the United States in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Most of them were fleeing prosecution from Mussolini's government, as well as poverty and persecution. They settled in cities like New York, Chicago, Chicago and New Orleans, and they soon discovered a land of opportunity and temptation. They brought with them a deep-seated tradition of secret societies and a code of silence known as Omerta. Some would say it's an offshoot of the Sicilian Mafia, and we'll get to them shortly. Although it may have been true in its early years, the American Mafia actually differs quite a bit from the Sicilians, especially with regards to some of the rules and codes of conduct. To keep it simple, if you thought the American Mafia was ruthless, wait until you hear how the Sicilian Mafia operates. Prohibition, which banned the sale and consumption of alcohol from 1920 to 1933, was the catalyst that transformed these small-time Italian gangs into an organized crime powerhouse. The lure of bootlegging, speakeasies, and underground casinos turned street thugs into formidable, albeit ruthless, entrepreneurs. But the Mafia's true genius lay in its ability to infiltrate the very heart of American society. They made their way into politics, law enforcement, and legitimate businesses, forging alliances and influencing decisions from the shadows. But we infiltrated every sector of society, from the guy on the street with the numbers business right up to the White House, mm. and everything in between. Wow. Their power was intoxicating, their reach seemingly limitless. With ties across the U.S., they tried their best to remain underground, operating in the shadows, staying as far away as possible from the limelights. And so, with the introduction of the RICO Act in 1970, their golden era had come to an end. Number 9. Cali Cartel Picture this. Colombia, in the 80s, a time when the drug trade was hotter than a Colombian summer. While Pablo Escobar was hogging the spotlight as the kingpin of the Medellin cartel, the Cali cartel quietly but effectively carved out their own empire. Cali cartel alone draws an estimated $2 billion in yearly profits, ranking it with the world's leading multinationals. In raw profit, it now outstrips Boeing, Texaco, and Pepsi. They were the dark horse of the drug trade, lurking in the shadows and pulling the strings by the end of Escobar's reign. Spearheaded by the Rodriguez Orjuela brothers and Santa Cruz, emerged as a formidable force in the world of drug trafficking. What set them apart from their counterparts was their elevated social background, which earned them the moniker Los Caballeros de Cali, or the Gentlemen of Cali. This distinguished them from most other traffickers of their era and highlighted their sophistication within the criminal underworld. What set these guys apart was their business acumen. They didn't just sling cocaine, they turned it into an art form. Drug bosses are insulated from any evidence that might convict them. One group sows the coca, another harvests it, another buys the processing chemicals, another transports it, another arranges the wholesale distribution. They knew how to diversify their portfolio, smuggling drugs in everything from pineapples to submarines. Yep, you heard that right, submarines. These guys made James Bond villains look like amateurs. 
But here's the twist. They weren't just about the white stuff. The Cali cartel had their fingers in all sorts of nefarious pies, from money laundering to political puppeteering. If there was a shady deal happening, chances are they were the puppeteers pulling the strings. But also, a significant network of legitimate businesses. Although maybe not the most powerful in terms of manpower, with estimates of just around 6,000 members, what set them apart was their business acumen. They were extremely efficient and utilized various alliances to outsource some of the dirty work. Number 8. Sicilian Mafia so while it is easy to romanticize groups like the Sicilian Mafia, it is important to understand the reality of what they are. Their influence and power is undeniable. The Sicilian Mafia, or Cosa Nostra, as you've seen in our previous documentaries, have played an extremely important yet complicated role throughout the history of Sicily. From helping win World War II to taking out one of the most important judges in the country, the Sicilian Mafia is quite volatile. They don't mess around. Major difference between Cosa Nostra in America, Cosa Nostra in Italy. In Italy, unfortunately, they do go after, they do retaliate against government officials, against judges against families at times, they do that. Although it seems like they've been quiet for years now, they've made international headlines when one of their most powerful godfathers was arrested in a private clinic in Palermo after being on the run for over 30 years. Hiding in plain sight. Italy's most wanted mafia boss, Matteo Messina Denaro, has been arrested. Operating with a chilling precision that rivals most military organizations, Cosa Nostra functions as an underground syndicate ruled by a shadowy council known as the Commissione Provinzale. But it's not just the meticulously organized structure that sets Cosa Nostra apart. It's the unwavering code they live and die by, Omerta. This code of silence binds members to an unbreakable oath of loyalty, imposing a chilling prohibition on any form of cooperation with law enforcement or divulging any of their most closely guarded secrets. But that has been slowly changing over the years. The Mafia's reach extends beyond the dimly lit underbelly of crime. It subtly infiltrates the corridors of power. This complex web of political and economic control serves as an impenetrable cloak, safeguarding the Mafia's continued existence despite relentless law enforcement efforts. The battle against the Mafia rages on, but its mystique, steeped in an enthralling tapestry of intrigue and shadows, persists, never failing to capture the imagination of the world. The story of Cosa Nostra cannot be separated from the history of Sicily. It's actually a lot more complex and intriguing than I thought. It gives us a huge amount of insight into the reasons and psychology behind how and why these groups emerge. Number 7. Triads Now, you know you're doing something right when most of the public aren't aware that you exist while being founded in the late 1800s. The Chinese triads are secretive criminal organizations with deep roots in Chinese society. Operating in the shadows, these groups are known for their complex structures, codes of silence. Their structure resembles an intricate web with numerous factions and hierarchical levels, making them notoriously difficult for law enforcement to infiltrate. These groups engage in a wide range of criminal activities. It would take all day to name them all. But just know, if there's money to be made, chances are they're involved. But not just at home. Their influence reaches far beyond China's borders, with global connections that raise questions about their true reach and power. Just to give you a better idea on how powerful these guys are, just have a look at what the triads operating in Canada have been up to. To launder some of their ill-gotten gains, they began channeling these illegal funds into Vancouver's real estate market and across Canada. In 2018 alone, a staggering $5.3 billion worth of real estate deals in Canada were fueled by this illicit money. The ripple effect of money laundering was felt nationwide, with Canadian housing prices spiking by 5% in 2018. As a result, many local Canadians found themselves priced out of the housing market, often forcing lifelong residents to bid farewell to the cities they'd called home for generations. These disturbing consequences eventually caught the government's attention, leading to the unearthing of what would turn out to be the largest money laundering operation in Canadian history. Insane, isn't it? Especially that it's just in Canada. Imagine what their international operations look like. So although they've been around for over a hundred years, it still does not seem like they're going anywhere anytime soon. Number 6. Neapolitan Camorra 
The Camorra, a shadowy criminal organization, hails from the sun-drenched streets of Napoli. Although they're based in Napoli and is considered their stronghold, their influence stretches across Italy and even the world. Acquiring a foothold in Spain, the Netherlands, France, United Kingdom, Romania, Switzerland, but even Peru, the Ivory Coast, and even Morocco. In 2013, experts estimated that the Camorra alone was generating over $4.9 billion a year. The secretive criminal group with deep historical roots is surrounded by a veil of uncertainty about its origins. The word likely combines capo, meaning boss, and a Neapolitan street game called Mora. When gambling was banned, some people started extorting money from gamblers to protect them from the police. As time went on, the Camorra transformed from local gangs involved in theft and extortion into a more organized and hierarchical group. Despite challenges, the Camorra endured. A key strategy for the Camorra was political patronage, which allowed clans to build connections with local politicians and officials, helping the Camorra maintain its grip. Number 5. Yakuza One of the most famous and recognizable organizations in the world. The Yakuza emerged in the feudal era of Japan. The Yakuza's roots can be traced back to the Samurai Code. They often identify with the image of modern-day outlaws who stand up for the common people. We have a full mini-documentary exploring the rise of this notorious criminal group and their shocking connections to the samurai. The Yakuza's economic activities are diverse and extensive. They have their hands in legitimate businesses as well as criminal enterprises. They invest in startups, engage in mergers and acquisitions, participate in the stock market, manage real estate, and even have interests in multinational corporations. This transformation into economic gangsters has made them akin to a massive hedge fund with billions of dollars at their disposal. Definitely one of the most sophisticated and wealthiest organizations in the world. The most powerful family being the Yamaguchi Gumi. One key aspect of the Yakuza is its organizational structure, quite similar to the American Mafia. At the top sits a godfather with multiple clans beneath them. The Yakuza's power structure extends down through the various ranks, each with its own responsibilities and obligations. A crucial component of this hierarchy is the Oyabun Kobun relationship. Despite their criminal activities, the Yakuza have a peculiar relationship with Japanese society. They are, to some extent, accepted and tolerated, as long as they don't cause excessive chaos. Average people may even manage in business with them. This unique acceptance is rooted in history and deep cultural ties. The Yakuza's wealth and influence have allowed them to become a formidable force in Japanese politics. They've supported politicians and candidates who align with their interests, with some Yakuza members even working on political campaigns. This political power further strengthens their position in society. The Yakuza's unwritten rules are strict and enforced, with penalties that may include finger-cutting and even exile from the gang for severe offenses. These rules help maintain discipline and loyalty within the organization. While the Yakuza has faced challenges, with the notable decline in recent years in memberships but also increased violence and changing public perception, they remain one of the most sophisticated and influential organized crime syndicates globally, with a history spanning several centuries. Number 4. Probably one of the most feared organizations in Europe and probably the world, the Russian Mafia, known as the Bratva or Russian Brotherhood, is a highly organized criminal network deeply ingrained in Russian society. The Vori Vezakon, or Thieves-in-Law, can be traced back to the Russian Revolution in 1917 and the subsequent establishment of the Soviet Union. The term Vor means thief in Russian, and being a Vor in Russia is a risky business. Successful Vori rarely operate alone, seeking safety and brotherhood within the Vorovsky Mir, the world of thieves. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s created a vacuum of power, and the Russian Mafia moved swiftly to fill it. In the post-Soviet era, the Russian Mafia expanded its influence across various sectors, including legitimate and semi-legitimate businesses. The Russian Mafia, compared to its Italian-American Mafia counterparts, had a more inclusive approach. It welcomed members from various ethnic groups hailing from different Soviet states like Armenia, Ukraine, Georgia, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and more. The main requirement for joining was, let's just say, an extensive criminal career. 
Again, their history goes very deep and plays a massive role in both modern and Soviet Russia. At this point, it goes without saying, at their level, they're racking in tens of billions every year from their numerous operations. Number 3. Sinaloa Cartel One of the most powerful criminal organizations in history, which we're actually witnessing its history unfold right in front of us, all the examples of their power are quite recent. El Chapo Sun, you can see it, and you can see the surprise and really how the agents are kind of uncomfortable or are fearful of what they just dumped in on <laughs> and walks out and kind of tries to negotiate with the federal agents that are trying to arrest them. And you can see that the agents are like, oh, what did we stumble in on? Wow. Right? Uh, his half-brother, Archibaldo, basically called in all of the reinforcements from all surrounding towns and regions in Sinaloa. And it was flooded with a bunch of armed cartel guys. As you can tell, these are not your regular street criminals. The Sinaloa Cartel is a notorious criminal organization that earned a reputation as one of the most powerful and influential drug trafficking cartels in the world. Based in the Mexican state of Sinaloa, this cartel has had a significant impact on the international drug trade and has been a subject of great concern for law enforcement agencies and governments worldwide. The cartel's leadership has seen several prominent figures, but perhaps the most iconic among them was Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. El Chapo, as he was commonly known, was captured and imprisoned multiple times, but managed to escape prison on two occasions, further enhancing the cartel's mystique. His capture in 2016 and subsequent extradition to the United States dealt a significant blow to the organization. The Sinaloa cartel controls vast swaths of territory in Mexico, especially in the states of Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. Their extensive network extends beyond Mexico's borders, with distribution networks reaching North America, Europe, and Asia. Both the Mexican and U.S. governments have launched extensive efforts to combat the Sinaloa cartel. But the cartel's ability to adapt and regenerate leadership has posed a significant challenge to law enforcement agencies. Number 2. Medellin Cartel Once known as the most powerful criminal organization in the world in its heyday, the Medellin Cartel was unlike anything the world had ever seen. In the world of crime, few stories are as captivating as that of Pablo Escobar and his infamous Medellin Cartel. This criminal empire, born in the gritty streets of Medellin in Colombia, became a global force to be reckoned with. Pablo Escobar and his partners began as smugglers, but their ambitions were much bigger. Their profits reached an astounding $200 million a day, making them one of the richest criminal organizations in history. While almost anyone on Earth would consider $2 million an insane amount of money to just have lying around, but to Pablo, it was simply a substitute to firewood to ensure that he kept his family warm. I mean, when you're spending 30 grand a year just for rubber bands to hold all the money you have coming in, burning away 2 million is not that big of a deal, I guess. From building his own prison, which was essentially a resort, to attempting to run for office, there's no shortage of insane facts about this criminal mastermind. Ultimately, it's a warning about the dangers of unchecked criminal ambition and the consequences that can follow. Number 1. Indrangheta Today, they are known as the most profitable criminal organization in the world, the Indrangheta, Italy's shadowy and enigmatic criminal powerhouse, emerges from the sun-kissed heart of Calabria. But its reach extends far beyond its scenic origins. This formidable syndicate thrives in secrecy, shunning the spotlight. The Indrangheta operates in the shadows, wielding immense power and influence. However, as their influence grows, all eyes are on them. These secret societies commonly found in olive and vine-rich regions of Calabria operated differently from typical bandits. They had a structured hierarchy and followed a code of conduct, with a horizontal structure composed of autonomous clans called Indrina, bound together by blood ties. While drug trafficking remains its flagship enterprise, it's a jack of all trades. Their reach is global, with a particular cozy relationship with South American cartels, who consider them Europe's most reliable partners. 
In fact, they're estimated to have raked in a staggering 53 million euros in 2013 alone. According to the Demoscopia Research Institute, criminal activities accounted for a jaw-dropping 3% of Italy's entire GDP in 2010. We still don't completely understand how they operate, to what extent their power reaches, but with over $80 billion to play with, they're not going anywhere. As you delve deeper into the Endrangheta's history, you'll discover a web of secrecy, violence, and unwavering loyalty, all bound by the infamous Omerta, the Code of Silence. It's a tale that spans generations, with the Endrangheta firmly entrenched into the fabric of Calabria, its roots running deep as the vines and olives that dot the landscape. With partners across the world, they've been reported to have influence in countries such as Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, and really most of Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. Forging strong ties with various South American cartels and organized crime groups across Europe, they have become a force not to be reckoned with. I'm sure there are a few others that we missed, but what do you think? Do you agree with our ranking? Comment below what you think are the top 10. Look, at this point, if you've been part of the Culture Mafia, you know what we're about. We extract lessons from across history and people to learn and become better people, becoming true men and women of honor. This Mafia is all about enhancing our own lives by learning from the mistakes of others. Without your support, none of this would be possible. So thank you. And if you're new here, accept these videos as a token of our gratitude. Although by now, it's become a cliché, but if what we're planning actually goes through, let's just say you'll want to stay tuned and already be part of the Culture Mafia. One last thing, like I mentioned at the beginning, we like to look deeper at how the world really works, especially when it comes to the game of power. And who better to learn from than the character that embodies all their keys and notable skills, Don Michael Corleone. In this video, we break down and summarize all the valuable gems you can start using today to put you in that top 1%. Enjoy!